remember from your uh, static and strength of material how to determine uh, the uh, shear force and bending moment equation. So we do this by integration method. Okay, so from the integration method, we found the magnitude of our shear force and we also found our magnitude, okay, our shear force and our magnitude of our bending moment, right? So we determine, we determine these values over here. Then you have to also remember about your what? Boundary condition. Okay, you have to know your boundary conditions well. So, and we're not even done yet. <laughs> so after, after, after that, we have to realize that how the shear stress and the normal stress has been distributed, which is explained down here, right? And then from here, like what I taught you all, where the failure will occur. Okay, where the failure will occur, you construct an element. Okay, that's where we are. We construct an element, determine our stress, normal stress and shear stress value. Then from here, right, we calculate our values. We construct 3D mole circle. We have to understand from experimental work what, what does the 3D mole circle means. Okay, so we realize in uni Excel test, the 3D mole circle is just one circle. Okay, and then from there, we have to apply mole circle uh, condition or mole circle theory. Okay, things like this mole circle theory apply our uh, maximum shear stress criteria then from there we can only from there then we can determine our omega value determine our minimum stress and then calculate our what? factor of safety this is a true engineering design okay the load is not just one direction later on we'll do compound loading loadings which are in 3d and you have to remember all these stages so the best way, so some of you will ask, what's the best way to study this? Every week in my lecture, you have to write your summary sheet, okay? Summary sheet together, I, and you have to not just write the summary sheet of, of, this, uh, of this course. You also have to improve your summary sheet based on an example, which I will help you do, okay? In probably, I will, I will, I'll help you do for the buckling, okay? Uh, that I'm going to teach now. Any question before we go into buckling? Anyone, please? Anyone got any burning question to ask, please? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Like, um, I still don't know how, like, how, how, how do you know the field of prying is like the con connection between the web and flange? This, just... that, is, that is because of the radius. Okay, so what we have over here, right, which is not taught in this course. It will be taught in uh, 3E. It is this radius. Why it will fail? Because down here you have a radius, and the radius is going to induce stress concentration. So that is why the structure will fail over there. Okay. So for this course, which is 3A, I will not include stress concentration factor in 3E, which you will learn. You will learn how to uh, uh, determine the stress concentration factor. Okay, I, I, sh I shouldn't ask this question. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay. Anyone else, any other questions before we go on in, in the first topic on uh, buckling? Okay, I don't hear anything. So we are going to go through buckling. Okay. Now, I, I wanted to start from buckling first. Uh, usually buckling is the last topic. And I realized when it's the last topic, I don't have time to finish. Okay, so I'm going to start uh, from, from, from buckling first, okay? Right. So we are going to go into uh, centric buckling. And buckling will be question in term test one. Okay. So buckling only occurs
Uh, we're in structure. Uh, under compression, Excel loading only. Okay, you have to consider buckling. Okay, when when we only have what have compression, Excel loading only. If it's under tension, you no need to consider buckling. So there are there are there are two types. Okay, there are there are there are, there are, there are two types of uh, of of buckling. Okay, so two types, two types of analysis. So one is centric, and the other one is eccentric. Okay, so centric, what do we mean by centric? If we have a structure, okay, this is our structure, and I'm going to draw the uh, instantaneous axis. Okay, so the green is our instantaneous axis. And the, the the load, okay, the load is applied exactly at the instantaneous axis. So this is P Y, and this is P Y prime. Okay, so this is what we can classify this as centric buckling analysis. So we're going to start with centric first. Then what do we mean by eccentric? So the same feature that we have over here. So I hope to. The same feature like what we have over here. Right. So the difference is this. Let, let me get rid of this arrow first. OK. So the difference between centric and eccentric is this. Okay, so eccentric, the load now is applied not at the instantaneous axis. So this is our PY, and this is our PY prime. So under this loading condition, as you can see, it's not loaded on the instantaneous axis. This is what we classified this as eccentric. Buckling analysis. And the formulas are very different. Okay. And the formulas are very different. Okay. Now, before I I I I I, I go on, is I'm going to hide, I'm I'm going to talk about stiffness. Okay. I'm going to talk about stiffness of a, a, a structure. So how does Uh, mechanical properties relate to the stiffness of a structure. Okay, how does it? relate to the stiffness of the structure. OK, so now I'm going to uh, give an example. So if we have a beam. That is built in. Okay, we have a beam that's built in. Okay. And then I'm going to have our. Instantaneous axis now the instantaneous axis 
okay, it's also known as the centroid. Okay, so I'm going to say this is our centroid. Okay, instantaneous axis also can be known as a centroid. Right, and then over here, we know that on this structure, we have our length. Ah, oh, sorry. We have our length. So over here, this is our L naught. Okay, and over here, we have our A. So A is defined as our cross sectional area. Okay. So now if we have a load applied on the centroid or instantaneous axis, okay, what will happen is we will have a compression. Okay, so I'm going to sketch out again. Okay, so the same structure. So now the structure is under compression. Okay, so it's good when it's under compression, it's going to become shorter. And then I'm going to uh, sketch out the centroid again. Then we're going to put a P exactly at the centroid. Okay, so this is our P in the Y direction. So what we realize now is now because of the load P, right, because of the axial load P, what we have now is our structure has been compressed. And when it's been compressed, it grown shorter, right? It's very obvious now. So now this will be our L1. Okay. So from here, we can usually stretch, sketch a stress strain curve. Okay, we can usually stretch, sketch out stress strain curve. So now I'm going to go into more detail on this stress. So we know that stress strain curve, our x axis, hold on, our x axis. Right, so this is our normal stress, and then oh no, this is our strain. What am I doing? Strain, and then we have our stress. Okay, now because of our loading, what we realize here now, okay, if we were to calculate delta L. So I will, I will say that this distance is our delta L. And our delta L is equal to L1 minus L0. And we know that L1 is less than L0. Okay, we, we know that. So therefore, delta L is what is negative so to calculate strain right to determine strain is uh l1 minus l0 divided by l0 so this will be equal to negative delta l over what l0 so we know that strain is negative so strain on this side epsilon is positive over this side Epsilon is what? Negative. And given to given how the load is applied, right? So if we were to now sketch our transformation, uh, this is our uh, hold on. I, I think I'm gonna change my transformation. Okay, so later you will not be uh so confused. So I'm gonna call this px. Okay, so this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. Okay, so we know that the stress in in the x direction is equal to minus px over a, right? 
So if we look at this, the stress strain curve by right should, should not be on the first quadrant. It has to be on the what? On the third quadrant. Okay, if we were to construct this properly. So what we have over here, this is our stress strain curve. Okay. So why? Because over here, our strain is negative. Our stress is also what? Negative, as you can see over here. Okay, and the same thing, this slope over here, this gradient over here, is our Young's modulus, where E is the Young's modulus. Okay. Right, so I'm going to uh, call this uh, equation uh, number one. Okay, this is our equation number one. And then, no, that's not our equation one, number one. Okay, so from here, um, we're going to make this statement where stress, okay, stress is equal to Young's modulus 